Welcome to my C++ course for beginners. This course is meant to take you from a beginner level user into an intermediate level user by showing you how to do multiple things. This series is also based off of one that I've supplied on YouTube for free that has gotten over 250,000 views and continues to grow today. But this particular course is going to be more in depth, including quizzes, and will extend on the principles that I've introduced. Some of the things that we're going to be covering here is how to set up your programming environment, programming in C++, using Git source control, programming our first C++ program with an introduction to things like vectors, classes, memory, and other important C++ concepts. Finally, we will talk about debugging and how to debug your program, which is an absolutely necessary step for troubleshooting in the real world. And I hope you gain a bunch of experience on how developers approach the programming process in the real world. So to get us started, we want to do a few things. We need to really set up our programming environment here. What I'm using is Linux in order to go through this tutorial. Now you don't necessarily have to use Linux. You can use Windows or even Mac OS. My first setup procedure will be for Linux, but I will make one for Windows and Mac OS as well for all of you users who want to follow along in a different operating system or you're used to using a different environment. You'll be able to follow along just fine. But if you're comfortable using Linux, I do highly suggest doing so, because I find it's the easiest one to install things on, including the tools that are necessary for compilation of C++ programs. I hope you enjoy this course and thanks for purchasing it. Suggest it to a friend if you find it helpful and let's move on to begin the course. So first off, we need to set up our programming environment. In this episode, we'll be focused on setting up Visual Studio Code or VS Code for short on Linux. Specifically, we are using Ubuntu 2022.04 for this process. You can use whatever Linux distribution you want, or of course, if you want to follow along on Windows or Mac OS, I'll have videos for that as well. In order to install it graphically, it's very simple. Go over to the Ubuntu Software Center. Most Linux distributions are going to provide some sort of software center. You can use it in order to download the proper software that we need. And what we're installing today is something called an IDE. We'll go into that in a bit, but basically we're looking for some sort of a search bar where we can type in what we are looking for. So clicking on the magnifying glass here in the Ubuntu Software Center, I'm going to type in VS and then code. You'll find something called code more than likely. It might be also labeled VS code, Visual Studio code, or something of the sort. Basically we're looking for code here and we're gonna click on here. And the reason that Visual Studio code is so popular because it's available for many different distributions and varying operating systems, including Windows and Mac OS, and has plenty of extensions that you can install upon the base IDE that helps you with ease of coding and is the most popular IDE available currently on the market. For those of you wondering what an IDE is, this stands for an integrated development environment. And basically, as you see here, it's a software application that helps developers with writing, debugging, and testing software. It can help you edit code, compile code, and even debug code. And modern IDEs can even help you keep track of your code versions. Anyways, what we're going to do is hit the install button which then you'll be asked for the administrative user's password. So type that password in and then hit authenticate. This will take a few minutes as Visual Studio Code is installing in the background. After things are done installing, we'll see this red icon here. We can exit out of the software center and actually search and see if Visual Studio Code is installed. We can click up at activities and just search VS Code. And sure enough, Visual Studio Code is now installed on our computer. Fantastic work, we're well on our way to setting up our programming environment. At first, you're probably going to be introduced with a short onboarding process. Basically, this allows you to set up the look and feel of VS Code. So choose whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with, including you can see more themes. I'm going with the dark modern theme for myself. I don't want anything too bright while I'm working. A few of the other things include syncing from other devices, adding shortcuts, adding languages, and opening up your first bit of code. I'm gonna mark this done and then continue on so we get the main welcome page. As we're going through this process and using this IDE, you'll get used to what's in these sections up above. Just know that they do exist and help us to get to different portions of Visual Studio Code. On the left-hand side is probably the most important portions of what we'll be using, including extensions, running and debugging, source control, searching for stuff, and of course, managing our project with the Explorer. If you need access to settings or the user accounts, you can access them down here. What I first want to click on is Explorer. 
this is the section where we're going to create our first project in and manage it through. But since we're setting up the programming environment still, let's go to extensions. In extensions, we need to install a couple extensions that will make our lives easier when editing the code and building and running the code. So let's type in C++. The first one you'll see with 47 million installs is going to be the C++ Intelligent Sense Debugging and Code Browsing. We can hit the install button and allow it to install. It'll say installing here and you'll notice a little progress bar going up top. Give it a few minutes while it installs. After it is installed, you'll notice a disable or uninstall button. And what this extension does is it helps us with C++ syntax, giving you suggestions and information as you're writing code and it adds debugging features on top of everything. This is definitely an extension that, that I recommend using. Next, I want to grab one more package. If you start typing in run, it should come up. And I don't want to take the first option. Instead, I want to find Code Runner. It's got over 19 million installs. And what this Code Runner tool will do is help us run our C++ code directly in Visual Studio Code. I definitely recommend this one because it's not only capable of compiling and running C and C++ code, but it also has many, many more as mentioned below. So I'm going to hit install. And once this one's installed as well, you'll have the disable un or uninstall option. And since we have those few packages, now we can go over to explore and create our first project. We're going to click open folder. This is where our project is going to exist. I'm going to place this somewhere on my Linux desktop. If you're not using Linux, of course, you can place it anywhere you want, whether it's on your desktop, documents folder, wherever, it's fine as long as you remember where it's located. First, I'm going to hit the create folder button and just create a new folder. I'm going to call it simple list and hit create. That created a new folder. And then I'm going to hit the open button. This will open up the simple list directory or folder inside of Visual Studio Code. Now you'll be asked, do you trust the authors of the files in this folder? Well, I do because I'm actually creating this and this current directory has nothing in it. So I'm going to actually check the trust the authors of all files in this parent folder which is located under my username. And then I'm gonna click, yes, I trust the authors. This is just a check to make sure that you're not going to accidentally open up some malicious code and run it on your computer. You need to trust a project before you can actually work with it. And that's it for now. We've successfully set up our project folder and our programming environment. We'll continue on to the next step of writing our first basic program in C++ and running it here in the next episode of the, of the course series. Thanks for following along. And if you're doing this on Mac OS or Windows, I have separate videos for that. That way you can watch them if you couldn't quite set up the environment for yourself. Let's get excited about writing our first program.